Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Guiding Star channel. Today, I have a real treat for you. I am so excited to share the work of a very special healer who is joining us here at the Wellness Hub at Guiding Star Astrology. Natasha, I'm going to read your name, Koshinka, um, who is going to be practicing quantum healing as a service for all of our beautiful clients here at Guiding Star. Natasha, welcome to the channel. Hi, how are you? Thank you I'm for really having me. Well. It is so lovely to have you here and it's lovely to have you as part of the Guiding Star team. Natasha and I met um, in a, a group chat, um, it must be what, six months ago or so now, um, yeah. through the Expanding Reality podcast with Brandon, which I encourage everybody to check out if you haven't done so already. Brandon does some amazing work. Uh, and so we met there and just, I, I don't know, I felt a kinship with Natasha. I felt that everything she shared in that discussion was just so wise and on point and intuitive. And I was like, oh, I really want to get to know her better. So we've kind of chatted via email ever since. And I'm just so impressed with her professionalism, the work that she does, and I'm really excited to share what she offers here. Hello, Sarah, her beautiful cat, who's jumped on screen too. Sarah's gorgeous. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to share her work with you here. We're going to talk about what Natasha does, but before we get to that, I want you to, Natasha, tell us a little of your background. How did you come to be where you are in life and how did you garner so much wisdom for such a young person? Oh, well, well, thank you so much. <laughs> um, so I just had a very um, long uh, life of uh, overcoming, I guess. Mm -hmm. I had to, um, my my ne neurological system is wired differently from other people. I'm neurodivergent. Um, and that just basically means that I think differently. So there are certain things that that um, I wouldn't get. I had to figure out uh, other ways to get around and make things happen. Mm -hmm. So there's just been a lot of kind of falling flat on my face is how I put it oh. uh, to, <laughs> to learn. And I mean, that's how you gain wisdom, right? It is actually, it and unfortunately, often the hard way, but that's life. <laughs> yeah. So it just, it's just, uh, again, just because of the way I'm wired and I just like, for example, like, so, like most people could learn certain ways. I, I would look at something because I can't, for some, for some reason, I just can't pick it up like other people. I would look at something and I would kind of like stare at it until like it starts to like click for me, like okay, okay, so this goes this way, this way. So like basically with anything, almost anything and everything, I had to teach myself. Like I had to kind of break it apart in my mind and put it back together. Right. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's, just, that's it. Just kind of like continually, continuously um, trying and, and going, uh, never giving up kind of one foot in front of the other, just going, going, going. And uh, here I am now today kind of, uh, figured out a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured but you it know, out. it's really it interesting. Out. There's so many people who learn, well, like there's so many people on the planet and we all learn in different ways. And that's actually often based on our astrological wiring. And yet we have, we tend to have school systems that are so narrow and mm -hmm. so, you know, must fit this tiny little box that really only suits maybe, I don't know, five, 10% of the population. And then we end up with, and I see this in my own teenagers, we end up with people who lack confidence in who they are because they haven't fit into these small parameters and yeah. so they spend the next you know once they get out of high school or university or whatever they spend the next 10 15 years trying to find themselves again and trying to understand themselves and trying to develop self-love and self-approval because it's been taken from them throughout mm -hmm. the mainstream education system and look don't get me on my oh I'm probably already I am on my bandwagon but <laughs> but I see that in my children I wish I could have offered my children an alternative um, education maybe a Steiner school or Montessori school or something like that would have been far more suited to my children I do see in Australia I don't know I've kind of gone off on a tangent here but I do see in Australia a lot of people are now choosing to homeschool their children after the last two to three years and rightly so you know I think um, if you if a family can afford to do that and the, and the time is available for a parent to to educate their children I think that's a far more suitable approach um, I don't know. Has it been similar where you are? You're in New York, aren't you? Um, have you noticed similar things happening in your realm of the world? Yeah, I, I feel like uh, 
basically, I mean, the school system is similar in a way, you know, to where they're not teaching you things, uh, things that you actually need in, mm. to kind of get by in a, in a good, positive, productive way. For example, um, yeah, some people just can't do the sitting in the school and learning these nonsense yes. subjects and repeat yes. the nonsense subjects over and over and over again. You know, it just, it just, it's too um, numbing. Yes. It's dull. It, it, it's, it kills the soul. Um, it, like, for, again, for people that are, are, and a lot of people are actually more than people know, a lot of people are wired differently. And yeah, the school system does not serve them in any way. And, <clears throat> and um, yeah, the confidence gets taken away for sure. I actually spent uh, most of my life until I hit, you know, what age did I hit when I, when I started gaining confidence? I feel like after my, I hit my thirties, I finally started to kind of like feel better about myself. Cause like basically the way everything's set up, I thought, honestly, I thought that I was stupid because I couldn't learn how other people could learn. Yeah. So I just felt very low about myself yeah. until I finally like realized at some point in my twenties, realized things are, there's something wrong. And then in my thirties, I finally started to like rise up with all the work that I was doing on myself, you know, and just like the energy work and all like just you know, work in the, in the, let's call it, uh, the astral realm, astral realm, just all this work that I did, I finally got myself to a point where, like, I see myself. Yeah. You know, I understand, and that, and through seeing myself, understanding myself, I now have this, this ability to also see others, understand yeah. others. This is, again, solving, solving the, the puzzle. Yeah. I went, as laid out in front of me, this, uh, this, this, you know, this way. And yeah, I figured it out. I, I, yeah, I, I think over the years, hopefully sooner than later, things will become different to like, we, I mean, we can homeschool for sure, but like, there should be some kind of system out there for sure to where, you know, like the, that the accommodates can, everybody. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's not where we're, we're in these, in these, uh, you know, classrooms and not being, not being uh, really taught anything. Just like, yeah. as long as we put in some time in school, Sarah, baby, stop it. Sorry. <laughs> Your cat, um, she's, a, she's a bit of a, a, a trickster, isn't she? <laughs> she's biting on everything, my goodness. Um, yeah, so. Well, I, I've I noticed that um, a lot of people who don't fit or feel that they fit in the mainstream education system, for example, but also in mainstream society tend to have a lot of very, alternative gifts such as intuition or psychic abilities maybe the ability to just understand astrology like that you know easily and it's a very complex science so to be able to understand it without a problem is uh you know it certainly requires a different um neurological wiring to to perceive that sort of thing to, to tune in to other dimensions i mean often People who have ADHD or um, dyslexia and so forth, those sorts of things, will often be seen to have Uranus in the third house in, in an astrology chart. I mean, there are other things too that, that can indicate it, but that's one of the main ones. And, um, and what that indicates is a very alternative way of thinking. It's not wrong. It's not right. It's just your astrological wiring that says this person's going to think out of the box, going to think originally and uniquely, maybe a bit eccentrically too. And how wonderful that is. You know, we can use those skills and those talents and those abilities that, are, that um, people with that wiring have. It's just that our society doesn't allow space for those uh, skill sets, you know, in a very conservative um, monoculture that most Western societies are. So, yeah, I um, I am all for people with different. As, how did you put it? Neurological wiring. Oh, divergent. Neurodivergent. Neurodivergent. Like we need all types of um, I would call it astro wiring on the planet to make uh, the planet function as beautifully as it was intended to. Yeah, and we need to recognize these different abilities and capabilities for what they are. For sure. But you practice quantum healing, Natasha. Do you want to share a little about what that is? So uh, there's there's the different ways that I go about it. Um, so my main uh, working with uh, the quantum field um, is called QHHT, 
which is quantum hypnosis healing technique. Basically, um, what I do is, I mean, another, I guess another way to put it is I guide people through the Ak Akashic uh, records. Okay. Technically, do you want to explain for people who aren't familiar? I mean, a lot of people will know what the Akashic records are who are watching this, but there may be some who are not. So would you like to explain what, what they are as well? Mm -hmm. Uh, so basically, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to try to explain it, um, that we live in a physical world, in a 3D world, right? And there's different dimensions. And the, four, the fourth dimensional realm, there's, there's the positive and the, there's the negative. Uh, so depending on where you at, where you are at, um, you know, you could basically travel to the positive or, or the negative side, uh, side of it, but really it's just the wholeness, the yin and the yang. So basically it's, let's, let's just call it um, uh, the Akashic field, right? So it's basic, or you could even say dreamland, like where yes. you go when you dream. Yeah. So basically that, that in weird in between state, like, like that state where we, when we go to sleep. Now this, this, this place, the uh, fourth dimensional realm is, is real. Uh, is just not physical. So basically the Akashic Records is that space and the Akashic Records is basically everything that has ever happened, that is happening and ever will happen, recorded. And I mean, you get, it can get pretty complicated. There's, there's like different timelines and everything. So it's just like yes. basically information on top of information on top of on, on and on and on. So it's, it's wherever you are currently, um, wherever your frequency currently is, is how you'll be able, uh, is where you'll access into the fourth dimensional field. Yeah. So if let's say you're, you're, you're in a positive mood, you're going to see, you you know, when you go to sleep, you're going to see rainbows and whatnot, yeah. you know, like good things. But uh, if let's say we're, uh, I would be guiding you through, um, through this, um, uh, technique, the quantum healing hypnosis technique, um, what I'm doing basically is uh, what I'm, I'm putting your ego to the side. I'm, um, basically we're, we'll, we're going to be exploring the right side of the brain, the creative side. Um, mm -hmm. when shamans go, go into, you know, their trance and they do their shamanic work, you know, like to, to work with the elements, to, to to work in that realm, you know, gear rid of, let's say, somebody's demons or whatever, they go into the right side of the brain. So all of this work it gets done, the astral realm could be accessed through the right side of the brain. Yeah, makes sense. We are, we are functioning on the left side of the brain, the, the linear, yeah. the, the logic side, logical side of the brain. So yeah, neurodivergent people are usually very right side of the brain. And that's, you know, coming back to what you said, people with these issues, ADHD and, and dyslexia, autism, they're just more here for the most part, not, not every single person, but for the yeah. most part. So yeah, but what I'm doing is basically, um, let's say you come to me, let's say you have nightmares, right? Just uh, as a starting example, and you don't want to have these nightmares anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into, into your, in your, into your subconscious, into the Akashic uh, records, into the quantum field. There's different names for technically, in my opinion, the same thing. Yes. So, uh, so we're going to go into this realm and we're going to, you know, see, we're, we're talking to your subconscious or your higher self. And we are, we're going to ask to show, show what it is that is causing these nightmares as an example. And we'll, and you know, basically your subconscious and myself are guiding you to where you need to be to get rid of this issue. And it could be with anything. It could be, um, uh, let's say, what else? Let's say you need to make a decision in life, right? And you have this cho choice A and choice B and you need to figure out like, I don't know, you know, let, let's say this job or this job. I don't know which one to pick. I don't know which route to take this fork in the road. So basically you could, you to under, with this session, you would be able to see what this, this uh, route, where that would take you and where this route would take you. So basically kind of like, you know, whatever, whatever, like, because in the physical world, you can't do all this stuff, but no. in this etheric um this this akashic or quantum field is just so this dream state is just so malleable you could play around with it so much so if you have any traumas that plague you that sit on you um again you were talking to your higher self your subconscious it, it will guide you to what whatever you need to see whatever you need to resolve 
Um, what else? I'm trying to remember other examples. There's just, there's just I, so much that could be done. I love that because a lot of the time I get clients and they're trying to make a decision. Should I live in this place or should I live in that place? Should I um, marry this guy or should I marry that guy? You know, and, and they're trying to make a choice. And it's really like, you know, it's such a valuable tool to be able to do what you're describing to get a, mm. a sense of, okay, well, what, what's my life going to look like in either situation, you know? Um, and I know that in ancient times, you mentioned what shamans do um, and, and certainly by utilizing all the tools and mechanisms uh, at our availability here on earth to get into this dream state, um, the Dwat, I think it was called in ancient Egypt or the, um, uh, the Akashic records is what we refer to it these days as, you know, that we might go like meditation might take us there, but utilizing um, shamanic drumming can take us there. Um, we might, um, you know, take ayahuasca or something like that. And there's all different methods of basically doing the same thing. <laughs> same thing getting into that that field that is there available for us to access in some way so that we can get the guidance we need to have better lives i, I just oh i just get tingles when i think about how powerful oh, I love this i love this i have such, such a passion for it i um trying to remember how long ago this was i'm gonna say like 14 or, or so years ago somebody handed me a book called many lives many masters oh and brian weiss he's one of my favorites i heard him speak in melbourne i love him mm. I, I oh my god so he was the one he was he was my first entry into realizing that there is more to to our world than just the physicality yeah. more than the third dimensional work because you know like we're constantly being bombarded with the only thing that's real is you know the physicalities you know like everything else is not real so like there was this big emptiness big big you know like lost the way i grew up you know just everything like i was just so lost and i read his book and i was just like wow and like it just rang so true to me yeah. to my heart like how legitimate like because like different people will perceive the book differently yes that's true I, you know some people are like well where's the proof to me like I feel the proof like yeah like everything that's in there when you take everything like it just undeniable so I was very very like the word is really obsessed with his information. I read all his books and I was like, oh my God, this is wonderful. I was obsessed with past life regression just because of, of the things that you could do in this realm. And like, wow. So much healing of past traumas and yeah. wounding that have occurred in, like I, I've had a couple of past life regressions and it's completely changed my life in the wow. physical as well. After every past life regression, I would just go through this purging process of my body, just clearing so much toxin out, wow. you know, like I'm not going to describe how that happened. Use your imagination, but my body absolutely just let go of so much wow. tension and shame and, and other, you know, toxins in my physical body through releasing these past paradigms. It is such mm -hmm. a powerful thing. So it's your, you utilize regression work to, to facilitate the access to the Akashic records as guidance. And something that Brian, I know, has talked about is progression. And you use that as well. Do you want to sort of describe yeah. those things for us? So um, I, I usually include both of the methods of the, the going forward. So the first, first met method I'll usually use, I'll, I'll, I'll do the past lives at first. Like I'll do several depending on like, you know, what's going on, how much time we have, what we're working on. And usually I'll also go into a past, I um, mean, you know, to a future lifetime. Yeah. So with the future lifetime, it could be just like a, you know, something, let's say even like not on earth, you know, mm -hmm. so that's always interesting. And then, or like, it could be uh, another lifetime here on earth, you know, that could be interesting. Um, that always gives you some kind of, some kind of um, interesting nugget to take home you know like I mean it's an interesting to me um I feel like to others as well and another thing that I really enjoy doing I, I try to I try to always include this uh, again every session is very different because every individual is very different uh the needs are different but I'll usually always try to include um a fast forward into our current life. life yeah brilliant brilliant mm. because well, here's here's what I'll say uh something along the lines of um go to a version of of your life in the future where you are 
absolutely content. You're mm -hmm. happy, you have all your needs met, like you're, you know, feeling wonderful. So like, let's say the person is 35, let's say they're 50, let's say they're 70, let's say they're 85, whatever the age is that they, you know, they'll access, they'll have this, this energy where they're content. So what we're doing is we're feeling into this energy and then we're anchoring into the current body. So that frequency is there. Mm. So it's like kind of bridging, bridging the gap a little bit, you know, yeah. getting there faster. Yeah. Taking you yeah. to where you want to be. Yeah. I love that through energy. I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know I've shared in a few of my videos about um, some snippets from Brian Weiss's book where he talks about what people have seen when they've gone forward into the future on this earth. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating to see what the outcome could be for, for humanity. It could be absolutely beautiful. But of course, um, you know, we are all in a, a paradigm where we have free will. How does that enter into what your work um, entails? Yeah. So what I feel like, I feel like it, um, what you're going to see is what your current frequency is. So let's say you're, you're um, somebody that's usually in a very pessimistic mood, you know, like just like basically, you know, you have all these traumas that kind of weigh you down. You have not yet um, worked on your traumas. Therefore, your frequency is not as high as somebody, let's say, has worked on their traumas and is now vibing high and is very happy. So let's say you're in, in that pessimistic state. You're probably going to see a version of, of Earth that is negative because there is technically a split going on you know yes, to where is. people are <laughs> right now on the planet I can see it in the lives of my clients and my own life I'm just yeah it's so obvious we are separating out in some into the fifth dimension some staying in the third sorry I interrupted do carry on okay um yeah so like it'll be uh, yeah it'll, I mean, if we're going to talk about uh, dimension, yeah, some people are, you know, stay in the third and others uh, choose because they've worked on their traumas, they, they become lighter. So they, they, they're they choosing their, you know, the higher timeline where, you know, they, the future will look bright and mm -hmm. lots of nature, lots of, lots of, you know, happiness, all that stuff. So yeah, definitely the yeah. future looks. So would you suggest... Now. Would you suggest that people, when they come and work with you, that they work on their past first to, to lighten their vibration, to heal trauma and wounding, and then perhaps look uh, into the future? Or do you do both in the same session? Like how can, how can people best work with you to their advantage, I guess, is the question I'm asking. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like it's okay to do everything in one session. Yeah. Um, and if you do, if you do a session, it could be a, um, it, it, you, you become, okay. So I don't subscribe to the idea that all, all QHHT sessions are supposed to be four to five hours long. Cause mm -hmm. the original, like by, uh, Doris, um, um, oh my God, I forgot her name. Uh, Cannon. Uh, she, she said that the sessions need to be f four to five hours. I, because our world is just speeding I, up. Yeah, speeding up and attend. It's hard to hold attention. There's just so much going on. Our our systems are are. There's just too much going. On, in my opinion, yeah. for somebody to like commit yeah. four to five hours, which that option is there. I'm offering that option, but I'm also offering the shorter version. So right. I have the hour and a half. I have yeah. the three hours, and then the four or five hour session. Wow. You know, it's, it's, because I mean, I'm just tr trying to kind of like be logical, you know, Yay. about what's yeah, needed. You, you can cover so much. So, so you can work via, via Zoom um, internationally with what you're doing because it's, it's energy. It's all in this right. other dimension. It's it's, we don't have to be present with one another to, yeah. to do this. Yeah. It's That's one thing people, you know, like I'm leading you, basically you're doing all the work, the, the, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's healing. No, like I'm not healing you. Not to say that I can't heal you because love heals and I can send love your way. But <laughs> outside of that, what I'm doing is I'm gui guiding you and we I don't need to be next to you to guide you through your own psyche. Yeah. That is precious. Yeah. I've done some past life regressions that were available on YouTube. And in all honesty, it is just not the same as having a guided 
um, session with with a practitioner who's been trained um, and you know and knows what they're doing and can help you navigate through that realm it is so much more powerful to have somebody you know and I the ones that I've done on YouTube have not really accomplished much in in my experience but the ones that I have had done with professionals have been like oh life-changing life-changing yeah. stuff so yeah, um, yeah. sorry say that it's tailored to each individual and I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm watching. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm tuned. Yeah. Watching YouTube video or listening to it. It's absolutely, like you said, not the same at all. No, no, no. Um, so how did you then get, like you discovered Brian Weiss. How did you then find uh, out about the quantum healing process? And, and did you mention Dolores Cannon a moment ago? Oh yeah, so she's the one that developed QHHT. Actually. I didn't know that. Okay, I love what, what her videos. You know, God rest her soul. But I love the videos of her discussions online. She is a profound, was a profound, or is she's she's her energy still with us, isn't it? A profound woman. You know, such a wise woman. Mm. Yeah. I love her. Love her. Um, yeah. Um, eventually I, you know, I, I got exposed to her for some reason. She didn't come into my sphere until w many, many years later. You know, I was already into a past life regression work, you know, so like I was just loving that. And yeah, when, when I saw, uh, uh her information, even though it was like, I don't know, for whatever reason, the universe didn't want to want me to see her, see it sooner. Maybe I had to do it my own way first. And yeah. then I just, uh, I decided, you know, to me, it's, it's because past life regression just kind of mostly is past life stuff. You know, I just wanted to be like, I feel like this is adding, cause I'm not, I'm not just doing it by her book. I'm doing it like do I'm doing the whole, um, past life regression thing, you know, the, 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 forward life um to kind of also add energy work to it like this I just add other things again tailored to each individual you yes. know so like I don't know it's just like basically my own um style of yeah. going into quantum field and whatever basically the each individual needs yeah. you know it just I could call it anything I could I could call it um something along the lines of uh Akashic Records guidance yeah. you know yeah same thing <laughs> yeah yeah beautiful so um so you discovered Dolores Cannon and then you yeah. started to integrate her teaching as well with what you're offering and yeah. uh, did that incorporate more of the future projection work it's just a different style I would say yeah okay. just a different style great yeah. great Matter of fact with regular past life regression uh sessions they're only our, our one hour long right yes yes yeah so it's just like different styles, different understandings. I feel like an hour is actually too little. I agree. Yeah, you can't. It's just so deep and so profound. You just can't get what you need in an hour. <laughs> yeah. So so what would be commonly what you would offer? Like the three-hour sessions is what most people would choose? Or what, what do you find um, clients? Yeah, I feel like the three-hour sessions is the most popular. The, the second uh, most popular is the hour and a half. Yep. Yeah, the four or five, as I predicted, not as much because again, it's it's a big commitment. Yeah. So, do <laughs> you want to just give a brief overview of what happens in a session with with you? Sure. Yeah. Um. Let me think. Okay. So I walk you through my own style of putting you into. Um. I guess I, I would call it a trance. Yes. Because technically it is hypnosis. Yes. Uh, and hypnosis, hypnosis, I feel like is not what the media portrays it to be. I feel like because hypnosis is such a real thing, I feel like it's, it's specifically purposefully being portrayed as something scary. And like, it's, it's not, it's, know. you know, if like, let's, let's say, a tel for example, a television, for example, <laughs> if a television set repeats something over and over and over again, you're going to feel like those are your thoughts and you're going to, you're going to fight for the certain things that the television, the people on the television told you, you're going to fight for those things as if they're, you, you, de you decided uh, on your own accord. Yep. No, <laughs> they got into your subconscious. Mm -hmm. so, so getting back to um, walking through. Yeah. So yeah, it's technically it's hypnosis. I'm putting you in, I mean, another way I could put it is uh, guided meditation. Technically, it's yeah. 
to me, it's the same. It might be a little deeper, but it's technically the same thing. I'm, we're doing a guided meditation, but it's deeper. It's yeah. deeper. We're working on, 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 on you, like in a deeper way. And so I'll put you, I'll relax your body parts, you know, one by one. And um, I, I work with, the, with, with your light wall of light here to help you relax waves of light relaxing you and then eventually we'll uh we'll bring you to a meadow i like to use a meadow beautiful and and we're gonna engage your senses so like what something feels like on your skin what you're seeing um what you're hearing um smelling you know engage the senses to ground you in, yes in that, into that world and then one more time we're gonna walk walk because we had walked down uh, mm -hmm. st uh some stairs and we're gonna have another staircase and this time we're gonna go up into the clouds and in the clouds there's gonna be a bunch of doors and you're going to basically you know you're going to be led by your your own um let's say higher self or subconscious uh to to a door that most um, is most attractive to you, that, yeah. or or a door that contains what you most need to see at that at this point in time. Let's say it's you need to resolve something with with your sister or etc. Uh, so you know, let's say uh, a door number fifty one. You know, random doesn't have to have numbers, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk you walk through the door. You're going to to you know going to a place I guess in your mind or in, in, in the quantum field or Akashic Records um, and you're going to be able to kind of like it's gonna a scene is gonna start to develop and we're gonna have you first notice yourself you know what you're wearing on, on your feet for example uh, you know clothing if you're a man or a woman what do you look like now what do you see after that and scenes you know scenes will start to develop things need to start to develop and yeah, you just kind of, your subconscious kind of guides yeah. you or higher self guides you. And I guide you by listening to where you are. Yes. I kind of connect in a way and mm -hmm. I guide you while your guide or your higher self is guiding you as well. So yeah. you're, you're being taken care of yes. by your higher self and by your guide. Yeah. And um, just from the experiences I've had in this modality that um, I, I, I love how guides like yourself ask questions rather than you know implant information like oh you must be feeling this or you like you described the television does that to our subconscious self yeah. and yeah. I think um you know trained guides like yourself are more like asking questions getting us to explore alternatives in our mind and and directions yeah. by our higher self's influence rather than you know implanting thoughts so to me, that's how you tell the difference between a professional and someone who's just farting around with it, you know, and quite dangerously too. Yeah. So it's supposed to be when you're doing specifically this kind of work, uh, you know, healing your traumas and stuff. Yeah. 100%. And Dolores stresses it yeah. very much so that, yeah, you shouldn't, um, you know, like, I mean, everybody works differently, but like you definitely should have the client's everything is painted by the client by yes. by their mind by their higher self absolutely everything and i'm just like oh okay so da 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 you know like yep. kind of like we'll go with their lead mm -hmm. yeah um oh uh so yeah so then so then you know we are we, we're gonna go through you know explore let's say that that door with your sister you know traumas there or, or whatever the situation and then you know we'll go back to the cloud you know when you're done with that scene uh, each scene can take sometimes the scene could take three minutes sometimes it could take 15 minutes sometimes it could take 30 minutes you know like however long a person needs to work on on a specific issue and then yeah go back to the cloud see another door see another door see another door and, I, and then like I'll read into the person to see are they already like, are they done? Yeah. You know, cause I don't want to overwhelm them. So it could be, you know, if, if you're like done, like I'm not going to push you, you know? Cause like I've had sessions where let's say they wanted a three hour session, but they were only able to do two, yeah. you know? I could also ask, do you want to, do you want to like, do you want to start to wrap it up? But for yeah. the most part, it's usually, you know, whatever we, we say it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, go through different doors, uh, visit different, uh, 
things that your subconscious wants to show you or your higher self and yeah and then I kind of I I started to wind down with seeing a future lifetime but not always you know depends once again where we are with time and you know what we worked on and then also the 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 future of this current life and then we'll do some kind of energy work let's say maybe we'll do a body scan or mm -hmm. like this and that like for example my last session we did an, an ancestral clearing because that's wow. what that person needed you yeah. know so it's just like depends on where we are i'm i'm well versed in so many uh, like energetic you know work like workings like you know like all these different methods so it's just like whatever i feel like that person needs at that point in time that is yeah. so powerful that you you can clear those old um ancestral wounds and traumas and you gen like i'm just like processing that in my mind how powerful that must be for some people to to clear their their ancestral karma as well as their own karma um what about relational karma and that sort of thing do you do you get a lot of that sort of stuff come up as well yeah it's, it's whatever uh absolutely it's whatever each person needs yeah so like yeah. basically their their subconscious is going to lead them to the, the to the door you know to kind of that they clear whatever cleared yeah I, I, each session is so different it's just always so fascinating yeah Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And it must be so uplifting to you as a person to see the healing that unfolds in people. I remember the first time I had something like this done, I just cried and cried um, afterwards because it was a very traumatic scene I was taken to that needed to be healed and cleared. And, um, and just, just, like I said, so much releasing happened. So um, it's wonderful to have like we've already um, said, to have that space being held for you, free, the freedom to cry with somebody witnessing that is actually quite a powerful thing or the freedom to share joy with the guide, you know, like that must be really uplifting for you to be able to hold space, as they say, um, in situations like that for people with their healing. This is the best. It, it really, it's the best. Like because of what I've, uh, I've seen in my life, what I've been through, uh, there's nothing that, that, a person could come to me where I'd be like, oh no, that's too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm just like, whatever you need, you need to, you need, you need to cry. You need, you know, like anything and everything is absolutely okay. That's when I, that's why I'm here. This yeah. is why I went through what I went through. So I could hold this space for you 100%. And it's so lovely. Absolutely. To see the, the other side of it, the, the, the positive, just like, oh, the joy. Um, oh, so uh, I had somebody do a, do a session for me a couple of months ago and uh, for like for me yeah. and uh, she only did one lifetime like because what I was what I was at uh, when we spoke before we did it some obviously somebody that I know because you know she's still training and you know I, I was <laughs> guiding her by letting her guide me in a way um, <laughs> I love it <laughs> so my my whole thing is because I I, I grew up um at a in a home where there was there was no love there was no connection you know etc um so you grew up in russia yes well i grew up in russia till nine and i came here in new york uh and i've lived here uh -huh. oh, thir thir oh wow 30 years now <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh oh wait what was i saying sorry <laughs> I've got to backtrack too I got I, you were saying how you grew up in a home with no love and oh, yes yeah. so she had uh she basically you know she only did it was it was a decently long session but she only did one lifetime with me to where I got to experience family and love um it, it looked like it was a it was a was pagan or something because there was definitely like celebrations of oh like, I love fire. it <laughs> it was really lovely and like yeah I walked away with such a full heart like I got to basically experience a lifetime of like family yeah oh, <laughs> which is nice gorgeous. and healing healing I don't have to I didn't have to look at look at uh like in this session I didn't have to look at any traumas I mean I've already done so much work as it is but like yeah. that's actually exactly what I needed at that point in time it was yeah. Lovely. yeah yeah so you had the opportunity, like if it, growing up in a home, as you say, without any love, you had the opportunity to experience what that was like. So now you can integrate that knowledge yes. of what it's like 
yeah. into your soul. And <clears throat> I just get so excited by past life regression work because you actually, it, the intensity of emotion is, is like more real, I find, than a lot of things we experience in the third dimensional body here. <clears throat> and so when we talk about integrating a, a, a upbringing of love and, and care and nurturance into our current experience, you do do that because the impact of that regression is so powerful on an emotional level and probably a psychological level as well. Um, it's just it's really powerful energy. I, I, I can't describe it in any other way than that. So what a, what a powerful healing that must have been for you to experience that. Uh, it was, it was, so, it was exactly, like I said, exactly what I needed. Yeah. Yeah. And the soul knows, doesn't it? The soul knows what we need. You were saying how some people are afraid to, um, to, to do this, this work, this quantum healing work. Um, I was because I'd grown up in a, a very religious upbringing, which poo pooed anything to do with anything mystical whatsoever. And um, after I had a bit of an awakening process, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try everything and decide for myself what is yeah. real, what is not real, what works, what doesn't work. And so I was like, that's it. I'm going to have a past life regression. And I encountered um, a wonderful woman named Robin, uh, who, who also works with me, um, who led me through my first past life regression. And it just, like I said, it changed everything. But it took me a couple of years from the time I met Robin to actually going and getting the regression done to work up the courage to do it. Yeah. Because it was, yeah. our society does not uphold these sorts of things. And yet, and, and there's a reason behind that, which I probably shouldn't get on my bandwagon right. about, but they don't want people to know about how powerful these tools are for your journey, for your healing, for your wisdom, for making choices and decisions. They don't want people to have access to that sort of thing. So they downplay it. They make it sound evil. They tell you you're going to go to the lowest levels of hell if you do these things because it will empower you. And they don't want you empowered. They want you as a, a slave, basically. So get involved in this mystical stuff because it's going to liberate you is what I I would yeah. say yeah. Um, when I first, when I first uh, found out about this I was like holy shit sorry mm. but yeah I was like wow this power this amazing what could be done with this like like you mean have a have a couple of, like a session or a couple of sessions and get out of that you know trauma loop yeah and I don't need medication anymore really yep yep so amazing <laughs> isn't it it's just so amazing yeah i love that i love the healing component of it so beautiful friends watching this video if you would like to have a quantum healing session with natasha um, and i'm sure we're all going to rush off and book in now i know i am <laughs> then all you need to do is go to the link in the description below for the wellness hub and purchase your session with Natasha um, and to do, go on a journey of quantum healing with her, which is just so beautiful, so powerful. I also love Natasha, before we wrap up this section of the video, I love that you do the progression side of things um, because, you know, we want a sh in this day and age when things have been so full of upheaval and craziness, we really do want to see that life is can blossom and flourish and be beautiful you know um and being able to to make go into progression work and see options that we can choose you know directions for our life to choose that are going to make our lives more beautiful more full of happiness and flourishing um that is a powerful tool it really is so exciting to be able to offer that to people because it's an activation they can take instead of just being told something they can by working with you, they can do something to make their life and their future yeah. more abundant and more glorious. They're Just taking their, their lives into their own hands mm -hmm. all the way. All so the way. powerful. I love yeah. it. And I it, love it. It definitely can be scary. Like, uh, I mean, I'll tell you right now that a lot of people, it takes them a while to come around because like, like, I mean, forget about everything else. It's just the whole idea of, oh, I got to work on myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also, you know, somebody that, that is absolutely in love with this work, fascinated by this work, like understand this work, even when let's say I, 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 I'm doing, like, I have somebody do this work for me. I'm like, oh. because like we, nobody really, well, most people don't want to do this, including myself. 
what I do because I want to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like my goal. My goal is rise up. So like all that 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 trauma, all that that heaviness, the density, no longer weighs me down. So I could just breathe. Yeah. So so like yeah, it's scary. But why why would we not want to do it though? Like, okay, yes, it's scary, but the results. Yes. It's just so worth facing our fears for. Yeah. Courage. Mm-hmm. Courage. Mm-hmm. Courage is not absent of fear. It's just yeah. going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I yeah, feel the fear and do it anyway. I love it. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about in this video, because I know nothing about it, and I've seen you post um about Schumann resonance, and I'm like, what is that? And I was like, I must talk to Natasha about it. And uh, yeah, I'd love for you to share about what Schumann resonance is for newbies sure. like me who know nothing. Yeah, uh, so it, it's it's a bit of like of a subject where just like, what is this? Like you said, like, what is this? So basically, let me see how to put this. Um, okay. So it's, it's like one of those subjects where it's like, how do I even start? <laughs> how yeah. do I even start? Okay. So, okay, I guess we could start here. Um, our world is changing, obviously. Something's going on. Um, so hmm, maybe I'll start with this actually. So um, a lot of us have heard of uh, the different ages. For example, right now we're in the Kali Yuga. Yeah, coming as out of it, thank God. <laughs> most of us know. So, so as we're coming out of the uh, Kali Yuga, more light is coming in more light, more, um, I'm going to call it photonic light. Yeah. I think that's, that's pr- appropriate. Yeah. Photonic light is coming in. So this photonic light, um, I mean, there's just so much going on out in the cosmos, uh, <laughs> you know, like I'm not out there to really see the structure. It's, it's how to me, like it makes sense how, how it works. So like, okay, so let's, let's start with, uh, our central sun. There's others, suns that that go beyond that but let's start with the central sun so the central sun is also considered a spiritual sun it's um right now it's emitting these uh photonic light particles to our our sun which filters whatever needs to be filtered for our solar system filters all all the 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 photonic light that we need to to earth and it's streaming down on to humanity, onto Mother Earth, you know, onto the whole planet. And as this light is streaming in, it's going everywhere, including our own bodies, our DNA. Now, this light is kind of goes into our bodies and it starts to uh, push all the densities that are in our bodies, kind of push them up. So we we'll have we'll have all these uh, negative effects, like for example, like all this light comes in. Um, we'll have like, uh, you know, we'll be angry and just like people like that, but this, this doesn't make sense. It's the stuff that's kind of like all the dense, dense energies, all the, the compacted suppressed emotions, it's, it's being kind of jarred. So it's kind of coming up. So the more it streams in, the more stuff is coming up. Now light is replacing this darkness. Light is information. Light is love. So our bodies, our, our, our DNA is being affected. It's changing from a two strength uh, um, DNA to, to three, to five, to 12, to 144, which by the way is the, where the 144 um, uh, warriors of light comes from. In the it's, Bible, it's, yeah. It's a DNA um, a, a reference to where we rise, our, our DNA reconfigures. So when we rise, we are the 144,000, but it really, again, the reference is the DNA because we rise, our, our DNA configures and, and we become these, these uh, light-filled humans. Yeah. Our light quotient increases. Yeah. Um, I do believe Brian Weiss in his book describes uh, the people who've had pro- progressions with him often describe people as being full of light. Um, at least you know two to three hundred years into the future and yeah. I'm like yeah. this is exactly what you're talking about this progress mm-hmm. to, yeah, to those be- exactly. becoming those beings yeah beautiful sorry carry exactly. on 
Yeah. So, so um, yeah, right now, the work that we need to be doing is clearing our traumas, whichever we, we can. Sure, that light from, from um, you know, from the suns is coming in and it's assisting, but we still need to do that other stuff to, to kind of make it easier, you know, because it's like, if we're just kind of letting it happen, we're just going to be continuously miserable, mm -hmm. you know, to clear the, tra uh, clear your traumas for, uh, through shadow work, through QHHT, past life regression, you know, whatever method that a person chooses, clear it out so you so you could kind of live easier. It takes it takes a while to clear all this stuff out, but it, it does happen. But yeah, as we come out more and more out of the Kali Yuga, we we are uh, we are holding more and more light. When the density is cleared out, we're we're holding more and more and more light. So you know, like how. Uh, in those, what, what are those images called? You know, Jesus with the light around him. Yes, Mary, the halos. Like, yeah. Mm. That's, that's uh, the high light quotient. Mm. <laughs> you know, that that's what we're becoming as we're, we're taking in more and more and more light. So wow. I think it's fascinating. So, so when it comes to the human resonance itself, there's different... Uh, so the chart that usually you'll see people that report on the human resonance, you'll see the chart. Um, I guess click Can on that first yeah, link. Yeah. Uh, you, no, not the first link. The, the second link. You'll see. You'll see the. You'll see um, like white light, kind of like emerging on to the chart. And Let's have a look. so what? So what that is the one that you are referring to. Um, yes, um, no, the second link that, um, is this the, the one with the white light? So the, that white light, so basically it's the, so this the, is a uh, measuring system that, that people use. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, that's what you'll usually see. You'll see like that first picture was actually mostly blue. Cause it, that's, that picture is of our current time. Like what's going on. The this last one is day. our current time. So there's not a lot of there's, light. Yeah. There's not much going on. So the, all that blue is calm. The green is basically kind of the earth's heartbeat is what I'm understanding. Oh, okay. um, so that stuff that's streaming in, that's the light. That's mm. the, we call it divine light. We call it dif by different words, but like I, I like to call it divine light is streaming in. So here there's just like not really much going on. So the other picture where you see kind of like all this, like kind of like, yeah, kind of like raining down. Yeah. Like if you see on the right, it says se uh, 70. The 70 here, it stands for Hertz. Okay. So if you go to that third link that I sent you. Yeah. Which is, oh, sorry. Just hang on a second. Oh, so, so basically, yes. Okay. So actually, you know what? Let's go to the to the the one the one where it's mostly blue. Uh, I want to point something out there first, actually. So if you go to the very left, where you see numbers, it's from zero to forty. Yes. Okay, so all the way on the left. So basically, that's that's measuring the the hertz. So from the top, starting at zero, uh, going to four, uh, eight, twelve, forty, and then the rest they don't measure past the forty. Okay. But uh. So that's basically the hertz. That's the like the intensity of the divine light coming in. So that's where you'll see like like the big streaming. You know, like looks like it's raining down. Yeah. Uh, so on the on the very bottom, you'll see all these numbers. It goes from yes. zero to twenty four or to zero, and that's the, that's like a day. So from like twenty four hours. Ah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Like I, I, I love being able to kind of tell people this because people look at it and like, what, what is this? So mm -hmm. I love, I love that you're able to express this because like, if you ask other like people that do this, they're like, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, you know, so you're like, doing a fabulous job. It's making great sense fun. actually. So, so yeah. So usually they'll report three days. Um, what else can I say about this chart? Oh, on the very, very top, you'll see the actual dates. So you'll see how it says. Yes. Today is 2408 to uh, 2022, today's date. Okay, so now if we go to that previous one where there's a, um, uh, um, I think it's slide number three. Yep. Okay, let me yeah. just get there. So this is uh, basically um, explains the brainwave. Oh, I'm a mess over here. Okay, so it basically explains um, 
like for example, the the delta that's the zero to four. Yes, that's the first, and that would be like deep uh, deep sleep. Um, so like that's when we're sleeping, right? Just like the deep needed sleep. Yes. So then we go from four to eight, which is theta, and that's reduced consciousness, uh, deep meditation, um, light sleep, REM sleep, and that's usually where where that uh, hypnosis work would be done like past life regression, okay. for example, um, or even gu guided, med <clears throat> guided meditation as a, as a matter of fact. So it's like, that's the theta brainwave state. So that's where you're, you're um, able to see the, the, like say, let's call it the dream landscape, you yes. know? Um, and then there's uh, the alpha from nine hertz to 13. Uh, people say different things so that it's not completely like 100% because uh, different uh, schools of thought just think of this differently. Um, the beta wave, uh, brain wave, all well, the alpha is uh, uh, just like, kind of relaxed, mm -hmm. awake, but like kind of like drowsy. Yeah. I feel like I usually live in the alpha brain wave state just because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like most, the, most of the population, it's probably a neurodivergent thing, I'm assuming, honestly. Okay. But, um, the beta brainwave state is like the regular human. And that's just like really awake, normal, alert, conscious. And then um, from 30 hertz and above is the gamma. Okay. And that's uh, heightened perception. And that's basically kind of like the higher mind. So when on a human resonance chart, it hits over 30, like I'll say something along the lines of like, we're hitting the, you know, the higher uh, yeah. brainwave state or something along, along those lines. And that's when you're basically, your, your mind starts to open up and you're no longer kind of 3D, you yeah. know, like, like yes. basically you have like, um, people are being hit with like such high amplitude that there's like more of a chance to wake up. Mm. So like basically, so like, I like, I like doing the reports. I usually only, usually only do the reports when um uh when it's like higher like when it's something worth reporting you know yes, yes. because if it's like just a little bit and you know there's no reason so um so let's say like every other day is when i'll re report and it just kind of like gives people like oh makes sense because like when it hits really really hard people's systems are all out of whack right therefore therefore you know they, they want to kind of like look at the chart and like oh okay that makes sense. So yeah. I kind of like one part of the reason why I want to report it is, is kind of, I do it on, on Telegram. I have a Schumann residence uh, channel and that's where mm -hmm. I do the reporting. And um, on Instagram, it's actually just, just the, like what you see in my profile, you'll just see like, you know, just those, those uh, reports, but on the Schumann residence uh, on Telegram on, on that channel, I have a chat that's connected to it. And in that chat, we all like talk about our symptoms, you know, wow. basically it's all like a support group kind of in a way where people like go in and just like holy shit I felt like this or or man I couldn't sleep how about you guys so it's like it's like a place where people go where they're, they're you know because like the really sensitive ones are really picking this stuff up and like yeah. you know it's nice to have somebody to talk to even if it's just through a chat you know so yeah. like I just like to have that community it's my favorite community I have a couple of communities yeah. it's my favorite community just because I don't know. It's just like, to me, it's very special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that like, sounds wonderful. So, so check out Natasha Schumann Exploration. Is that the name here of your, your channel? Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, Schumann Exploration uh, on the bottom, actually. Uh, Schumann Resonance Explore Explorers. Okay. But but not the dash seven, three, six, because that's, that's more of um, um, the post itself. Okay, so yep. Schumann Resonance Explorers is what you want yep. if you want to join that community with Natasha yep. and talk about the effects of the, the light now and the, the spiritual frequency. Uh, I am quite astounded by this because I am a big fan of the Plato's 26, or some people think it's 24, we don't quite know yet, 24,000 year cycle, the great year, which is the binary system of the sun and the fixed star Sirius. In, yeah. in a dance with one another and it is believed that when Sirius and the sun are far away from one another that's when we're in the, the Kali Yuga at our lowest state of consciousness but when okay. Sirius and the sun are close together um, which we're going to be at in about 10,000 years time then we're in the golden age where we can do all these amazing things and healing yeah. is just 
part, you know, like we don't need to heal from anything because we are fully healed. And what mm-hmm. you're saying here with the spiritual son, which is what Sirius is considered to be, they worship Sirius in ancient Egypt because of this. Um, this the the light from Sirius, let's say, the spiritual sun is being filtered through our sun, causing these effects. And because yeah. we're far, this is like just blowing my mind because this is the science behind the theory of the golden age and Kali Yuga and Plato's great year. It's saying that when we are closer together with Sirius, we get more light particles into our body and we are then functioning at a greater vibration um there's just much more blessing much more happiness no more kali yuga bring it on you know (laughs) i love this oh my god i'm so excited natasha i had no idea that the schumann resonance is actually referring to the cycle of the ages plato's great year this is sorry i'm rambling i know i'm on my (laughs) soapbox but um this is why they created uh stonehenge and all these ancient monuments to to sort of measure you know the the progress of the ages because it's just so important in our incarnational journey oh wow this is fantastic (laughs) i'm so excited i'm going to join your group straight away (laughs) i love Love it. it Yeah, so so um, in the Telegram uh, ch- um, on uh, channel on on um, te- uh, on yeah on Telegram, if you go on the very top on a channel, uh, it, there's pinned messages, and like if you scroll through a couple of them, eventually you reach you'll reach um, a uh, message where it says where the ch- uh, chat is. So basically, yeah. if you want to get to the chat, just scroll through the pinned messages on the Telegram channel itself. Yeah, and great. That's how you get into the chat. Because technically you can uh, leave comments, but like you won't you won't get the full chat if that's what you're looking for. That is, of course. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. That is wonderful. So have you noticed, like just going to the current day, um, like have you noticed that there's been an increase in light? Like what's been happening with this Schumann resonance over the past three years? as we've been going through this really difficult cycle in humanity has it have well, we been getting more light coming in than there was previously or so i gotta be honest with you i've only been doing this for about a year and a half mm-hmm. so i wouldn't be able to like go too far yep. to be not to be honest but from what i'm hearing um after 2012 like instead of like the chart that you see here yep. it minus the streaks so that's what it would kind of look like it would just just mostly be the blue and then you would see the green which is the earth's heartbeat which is basically a day it's like you know you see the pattern kind of almost like a day and this that all this other extra stuff is just kind of started coming out of nowhere yes yes (laughs) and so does it matter where this is measured from on the earth do you know so this is uh this chart is from tomsk tomsk uh russia uh-huh. Now they do, they do do um, other, like they do have other stations throughout, uh, throughout there. there's like in Italy and this place and that place. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how they combine everything for this one yeah. particular chart. I just know that this chart is for everybody on earth. Right. I I'm never just, got into the other stuff. I'm wondering you know like when when our part let's say here in australia when we are facing away from the sun and away from sirius would the light particles be recorded as less and then when we come like in the the cycle of a day a spin of a rotation of the earth as we come back to face where the light is coming from would that be why it's like a heartbeat you know i'm uh, like the increase in light is recorded as stronger and then when it's dark is that when our part of the earth is facing away from the light source i'm just i mean you might not know the answer to this but this is my scientific I brain going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like that too i understand um so so the green that's just like her just like doo-doo, doo-doo. that has okay. nothing to do my understanding has nothing to do with uh, with um uh, anything light particles. Uh, yeah it's the, it's all these little streams that you see that's yeah. when when it kind of like hits the earth and i guess the whole earth is affected because technically so we have um the ionosphere Mm -hmm. and what it is is all all this light is basically it's um the lightning yeah that that you know so it's um 
I'm not completely sure. Like I, I don't think it matters which yep. side of the world you are when, when it hits. Yeah. Yeah. And look, that that might, I'm, I'm just hypothesizing here, but that might be possible when the light hits, it's just absorbed by the ionosphere and we all feel it everywhere. So like, you know, that, that might be um, a, one of those reasoning, but this is hypothesis and, and perhaps conjecture. Um, I probably need to look into it and read up on it more <laughs> before I go sharing my, my ideas and perceptions, but I'm, just astounded by this and we have re just just on the weekend just gone we have had the helical rising of Sirius meaning that the star Sirius is now visible in the sky where it's been lost in the glare of the sun up until now so it's going to be very interesting to just observe it if there's any shift in how much how many light particles are coming through now that Sirius is actually visible in the sky um, if indeed it is the spiritual sun that you're referring to that's influencing. Um, yeah. sci sure. Science is only just starting to say, yes, it's possible we're in a binary system with Sirius, but the ancients, they knew this, you know, like they were worshipping Sirius and the helical rising of Sirius every year. Um, yeah, in, in ancient Egypt and so on. So, wow. All right. So, yeah. So I wrote down a, a few things. Um, I'm just going to read them off. It was just like kind of when I knew I was going to do this interview, I kind of just like wrote a bunch <laughs> of stuff down. It's not, it might not flow too well. It might, it might flow well. So I'll just read off what I, what I had written. So ascension is a physic, uh, is when your physical body and the light body merge. So basically that's what ascension is. Ascension is not, you just leave, you know, like yes. what we've been told. I don't know where that story came from. I don't know if that was a thing. Religion? <laughs> yeah i don't under i'm not sure if it was an actual thing it doesn't feel like it doesn't make sense to me so anyway ascension contrary to what is out there it's actually our our soul our higher self joining with our physical body um so yeah so the higher aspect of ourselves merging with the lower aspect of ourselves which is called integration and when we integrate uh we're integrating um emotions uh, anything that's stuck stuck in the body uh, through alchemy through you know inner alchemy um, as we cleanse as we do our inner work we, we're releasing we're detoxing from negative and dense energies this creates lightness within the cells the cells are becoming filled with light karma is clearing away as we can see more clearly as we burn away the old festering energies the integration of the higher self into the physical body is embodiment, is spirit merging with the body. Us developing de deeper energetic web into the body. So basically, as the light comes in, as, as our higher self, as this divine light comes in, it kind of like develops like a web inside of our body. Like we're just basically like kind of becoming light. I, I can't explain it. Maybe people could understand anyway. Um, yeah, so the pre previously uh, thought of to be junk DNA is becoming activated as the whole reconfiguration oh. with this light coming in. Uh, we are becoming a different kind of human. Um, kind of like uh, the, the next thing that I could uh, say is like, you know, what, what's considered Pleiadians, yes. you know? Yes. I'm not saying that's what we're becoming, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, that's the next, that's, a, that's the thing that comes to mind. Uh, psychic powers are cosmic powers. And that is what's, what comes online as our DNA, DNA is becoming more and more um, what is, what is the ori its original way of being. Uh, uh, to have these powers uh, and to connect to the higher realm, you have to build a healthy auric field and light quotient. Mm -hmm. So basically clear, clear out um, all the density, all the traumas, and to build a light quotient, it's when you connect with your heart. So when you feel feelings like compassion, bliss, um, forgiveness, uh, joy, just all the stuff that that's related with the heart, I'm not uh, not gonna not gonna be able to list all of it because you know yes. it doesn't always come. Oh, gratitude is my my favorite one, by the way. When you feel these feelings, uh, it activates. Um, I'm going to call it the, the Fibonacci sequence because that's, that's basically you see that in nature, that's nature, you know, 
What, um, what is that? Sorry, excuse my ignorance. Yeah, sorry. I'm like all over the place because it's just hard to explain. Um, so your heart. How do I explain? So it's, uh, yeah. So the the, the Fibonacci sequence is is the the sequence uh, the the frequency of love of nature, love nature, God, universe. Um, you know whatever we want to call it. So basically, uh, when we have these feelings. We have we have some something like this the the Fibonacci thing it's activated and th therefore all this light kind of kind of the light quotient increases so basically we become more and more filled with light yeah. through these feelings of joy compassion so basically you want to build up your light quotient that's what right. like the, the, the you know that that thing around Jesus around Mary if you want to yes. build that that's how you do it through through the fe developing fe feelings in the heart which yeah. which if you've done your your shadow work if you've done a clearing of the trauma you're you'll you will eventually be able to uh feel your heart because i know from a personal experience and i know from the experience of others some people just can't feel their heart like mm -hmm. i i do understand that um yeah so when you clear all that stuff out you you will be able to start working with your heart and when you build up light quotient you could do a bunch of amazing things for example uh being able to start working with your merkaba or it's a whole thing yeah, yeah. uh yeah. for for anybody that wants to explore hmm, yeah there's stuff that you could read uh so okay magenta pixie has 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 a line of books um Massives in the Matrix is the first one. The second one is um, the Starseed Template uh, along those lines. And the other one is um, the Infinite Helix and the Emerald Flame. And so the first two books are kind of like getting ready for the third book. And the third book is basically teaching you how to use your Merkaba. Wow. Yes. To me, it's yeah. fascinating. I oh, love all this. Natasha, I'm... We're going to have to have you come back again, I think, and talk about that in greater sure. detail. Yeah, yeah. That would be really good to to do that at, at some point in the future. Your I knowledge is inspiring. It really, really is. Um, yeah. So, oh, you could go, to, you could go through, uh, again, once you build up this light quotient, you'll be able to, oh, as weird as this sounds, <laughs> travel through star, Stargates. Again, that's the, that's the inner realm. It's nothing special. It's not not an external thing. It's you know, working in the quantum field slash yes. akashic record field. Um, what else did I want to? Okay, so uh, I, I think the last thing is connecting uh, without a oh, when when you connect um, without a higher light quotient, and you don't have you don't have anybody to guide you to to help you understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh so basically i don't recommend mm, if okay you can definitely travel into into the astral again you kind of need a guide if you want to make sure you feel comfortable you feel safe because yeah here's the thing uh i think i'm going to get into religion for for just one minute minute that's fine so, by me. <laughs> so so there are people out there now not everybody not everybody has heard of this but there are people out there that went from being into spirituality going into christianity because they they had a bad experience so there are people like that because usually it's all the way around but yeah. it also works all the way so my understanding personally what what happens in and that is that doreen virtue would be one of those people wouldn't she? yes yes exactly yeah. exactly exactly so my my understanding of what happens is that they have not cleared their stuff their trauma and or they they haven't built up their light quotient, and they 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 don't have anybody to guide them or to let them know or have them be aware of that they could be just talking to lower astral mm -hmm. astral realm entities. So if you are not able to discern who you're talking to, because you know, like or I'm talking about, I guess people that that are mediums or yes. or channelers. If you don't have discernment to understand who you're talking to, 
it's a very good, there's a very good chance that you're talking to a, a negative entity. Yeah. So my understanding is that these people had an experience with, with negative entities Yes. And, you know, they're like, oh, they're all demonic, da, da, da. But no, you're literally not this, just not discerning that you were not discerning enough. For example, if you're, if you're dealing with a negative entity that, that presents itself as an angelic entity, but is actually not an angelic entity, there, uh, a way to discern is how are you feeling? Are you feeling excited or are you feeling calm? Here's the difference. Chances are you're talking to a negative entity is when when you're you're just feeling excited. So what, what's happening there? It's you're kind of like your nervous system being affected and you're just like excited. Yeah. That's that's not good. Yeah. What you want to feel is calm, love. Yes. Then it's a legitimate good, yes. good uh, pol polarized uh, entity, um, angels or whatever. Um, so yeah. So I feel like they. Th you know, they go have this experience or one or, or several or whatever the case may be, they have this experience, they're like, oh my God, spirituality is evil, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're literally not discerning who they're talking to. And you're meeting that negative entity because because of where you're vibing at. Yeah. You no? Know? So That's it's like, it's like you're, uh, it's, it's that, that whole um, mirroring or law of attraction, just like what you meet is what you are, what you yes. see notice is what you are there's no shame in in having a negative vibe we live on earth it's really really hard mm, it is <laughs> um, it is we all know that <laughs> we're constantly being pulled down no matter how much we're, we're trying but we can heal we can get rid of all that density through our shadow work and yeah get to a place where we're no longer like all, all we see is negative stuff yeah i think i'm done Hold yeah, on, that's amazing. No, and so timely. I'm so glad that you talked about that because I actually have been in conversation with a few friends this last couple of weeks about that very topic, talking to other beings and being deceived by them, being, you know, and, and uh, you know, what you've described is people going back into the lower vibrational things, which is what religion is, um, yeah. because of their conversations that say with beings that really don't have their higher good in mind at all and that makes sense mm, yeah. perfect they're sense. literally here to deceive you to take your energy yes. to scare you to whatever or just to to just eat your attention yeah. guide you to, uh, down a wrong path etc and have you have something bad happen to you so they could feed off this energy yes yes yeah, really, oh really wow that's just so timely i think i'm so grateful that you shared that natasha because i i really yeah, that's a, a topic that's in my periphery at the moment with a lot of my friends. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining us here for this discussion. I am just like got goosebumps. I'm so happy and excited to have been able to do this with you. And I'm so humbled and honored that you've joined the Guiding Star Wellness team to offer your services to support people in their raising their vibration and healing their past traumas and getting guidance for the future. I just think this is so beautiful. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us, Natasha. And once again, friends, if you would like to have a session with um, Natasha, you better get in quick because she's going to fill up very fast um, if she's not already, you know, overloaded. Um, and all you need to do is go to the link in the description. Um, I might also put a link across the screen as well and make your booking with Natasha. Thank you so much, Natasha, for joining us. We'll have to have you back again sometime soon. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute delight. Thank you, everybody. We'll catch you again. Bye.